Okay, today in this lesson we're going to discuss some of the safeties and uh, low water cutoffs that can be found on a lot of your hydronic and steam heating systems. Now per codes, uh, International Mechanical Code, International Residential Code, a boiler has to have a low water cutoff on it. It has to have some sort of safety installed on it in the event of some sort of an emergency situation. So limit switches is the first thing that we're going to cover. So limit switches on any of our heating appliances are basically thermostats. They are going to react based off of the temperature of that appliance. They are going to open when there is an unsafe condition that exists on that appliance. Now, since we are talking about hydronics and boilers and steam heating, we are going to talk about boilers. So in this case, your limit switches are going to open and turn off the boiler when we have a high water temperature situation. Okay, so per Connecticut code, all requirements, a manual reset. Okay, the Connecticut Code requires a manual reset high limit switch on all commercial, industrial, and institutional hydronic installations. So here we have a manual high limit switch. The manual high limit switch is right over here. This little red button right here. Okay, that high limit, manual reset, high limit switches are required in like commercial applications. This is going to sit on a pipe. This is going to sit maybe in a well inside the, uh, the boiler itself. And it's going to monitor the boiler temperature, water temperature of that particular appliance. If there was a issue where we got too high, temperature overshot, whatever, this little red little button will pop out and it will shut and it opens up the contacts which will shut off your burner and the only way that it would ever be turned back on is if somebody went in there and manually pushed that button back in to close the contact again. Okay, your high limit switches have normally closed contacts which will open if the operating temperature of the system overshoots the set point of the aquastat's high limit setting. Okay, an aquastat is a thermostatic control for water which controls all of the temperature functions of a hydronic system. So when we are talking about limit switches and aquastats, that is basically the brains of the entire operation of a boiler. Aqua, stat. Aqua, water, stat, temperature. The aqua stat has to be able to sense and control the water temperature of a boiler. Okay? So the high limit section on an aqua stat is the highest limit in which that boiler will operate. Once it reaches its high limit setting, the burner shuts off. It's a thermostatic device. Okay, a high limit function is to disrupt the heat source in the water temperature exceeding a predetermined point. That predetermined point can be set on an aquastat. We can set the temperature at which we want the highest water temperature to be. Okay, high limit switches are safety devices and should never be bypassed. That is actually against code. You should never ever bypass an aquastat. That is a very dangerous situation. Okay, the low water cutoff is responsible for de-energizing the burner in the event the water level in the system falls below a desired level. Okay, the low water cutoff is also a safety device that most code officials require it to be installed on all hydronic systems. The, high, the low water cutoff is also, again, a safety device. We cannot, under any circumstances, leave a 
low water cutoff jumped or bypassed in any way. That is illegal. If a low water cutoff is open, it is because of a water level situation. Okay, just like the name of the top of the device says, low water. The water level in a boiler has to be at a preset point in order for that device to work properly. If it's not sensing the water level, it's not going to operate. That is a picture of your safeguard low water cutoff. Okay, on these it gives you a water level. It tells you where the precise water level of the boiler needs to be. In this case it's probably going to be right around here. The water level has to be up to this point or higher in order for this device to detect the water in the boiler. If that water level happens to drop below this, this will open. And when it opens, it will shut off the burner, rendering the unit inoperative. Okay, so what is a low water condition? A low water condition occurs when the level of water within a boiler's holding vessel falls short of that prescribed by the manufacturer. It can be caused by a number of things. You can have leaky pipes, which is obviously can be very visible. You could have a malfunctioning water feed or simple disrepair. Low water situations on boilers is a very serious condition. One of the biggest catastrophes that can uh, a boiler mechanic can run into is a boiler that is running completely dry because of a malfunctioned water, low water cutoff. The low water cutoff is the only device on a boiler that's going to be able to sense the water. If it's corroded, disrepaired, broken because uh, miswired, that can honestly be a very dangerous situation for the, for the mechanic. It can be a dangerous situation for the homeowner, business owner, whoever it may be that has this boiler in their home or business. Low water cutoffs should be tested to make sure that they are functioning. Uh, when you are in doubt of a, wa of a low water cutoff possibly malfunctioning or having an issue, it is not frowned upon to replace that water, low water cutoff. Okay? The safety devices are something that every mechanic should take seriously. So why is a low water condition dangerous? Well, a low water condition places the entire boiler at a very serious risk. Without the proper amount of water, a boiler may be unable to properly uh, distribute and transfer the amount of heat and energy that it's being subjected to. Okay, and this result can be an explosion. It can result in a fire. It can result in injury. It can extend an extensive property loss or even worse. Boilers can explode. especially if they are run dry and there's no water in them at all. A hot cast iron boiler being introduced with cold 50 degree water is a ticking time bomb and can honestly explode, can rupture, it can do some serious, serious damage to people that are around it. Okay, so what does a low water cutoff do? Your low water cutoff does two things. Well, first, it's going to accurately detect a low water condition should it occur. Your second, it's going to automatically shut down the combustion operation of the boiler. This will prevent the boiler from firing while its water level is too low to properly manage the heat and energy that the 
burner is introducing into that boiler. This is an example of a McDonald Miller brand low water cutoff. Notice we have on the end here, it's like a little float or a little toggle type device. This guy gets screwed right into your water line. If that water's level happens to drop, this switch will now open, which will send that signal down to the aquastat, telling the aquastat, look, I have a problem, and shut off the burner. This is another version of a low water cutoff. Notice the same thing. We have some sort of float device that sits inside the, your water level. Okay, here's the wiring for your McDonald & Miller low water cutoff. Okay, usually they are powered with 24 volts. Okay, powered in 24 volts, your low water cutoff is wired in with your aquastat and your other limits that are on this particular burner. In this case, this is a, apparently this is a gas-fired boiler, so obviously we will have some other types of limits that are on there, for perhaps roll-out switches, uh, high limit switches, all sorts of other types of safety devices that are on there, flame detection devices, all sorts of stuff will be wired in series with your aqua, your low water cutoff and your aquastat. Okay, here's a couple of Taco brand low water cutoffs, same type of operation. Here is your wiring diagrams for your Taco low water cutoffs. Okay, in this case here, we have a low water wiring diagram using a burner circuit power source. So our normally closed contact will be powering up our burner. The normally open will be for our electric water feed or even an alarm system. Now we will have our H and our N, which will power up our burner source. And then we will have our ground and our electrode wiring wired into that panel, which will now be controlling our low water cutoff. Okay, this is a Safeguard brand low water cutoff. And this is the model for the uh, 170SV wiring diagram. Okay, so we have two types of ways of wiring it. Wiring A is wiring may be accomplished using a single source of power. 120 volts for both the control and your burner circuit. Okay, so your in this case you have your ground. Your 120 volt power source is going to be wired into your H, and then you'll have a little jumper between H and P1. That will send that out to your uh, controls. In this case, P1 and P2 will open will close, which will turn on your burner circuit, and then your normally closed will open your alarm or your feeder in the event of a low water situation. 